hospice company that provides comfort to dying patients is accused of using those patients to take millions of dollars from the government. The community watchdog Nate Morabito found out the U.S. government filed a whistleblower lawsuit against Caris Healthcare on behalf of a former hospice nurse. Yeah, this is specific to Bristol, Virginia. In court documents, the former nurse said the company made it clear she needed to secure patients whether they qualified for hospice or not. And once they were in the system, she and her coworkers needed to keep them there, even if they were not dying. The lawsuit argues up to half of all of Caris Healthcare's Medicare claims were false or fraudulent. There we go. Gail Fleener doesn't love living at her childhood home. It's not easy. She moved back in years ago. I'm an only child. To take care of her parents. I'm glad I did. More than two years after Rouse. He loved to garden. And Dorothy died. She's the sweetest person, kind, giving. Within just six months of each other, there's still plenty of life here. But I've got Sadie. Come out here and say hello. Yeah. From the family pet. <laughs> She'll bark at you like crazy. To Gail's given name. Dorothy, after my mother. In her father's garden. His flowers are still blooming after all these years. But overshadowing many of the happy memories. And even though there's weeds. Is the way things ended, particularly the prolonged death of her mother. She entered hospice care long before she passed. Fleener says her mom, like her dad before her, received hospice was, care from Care's so Healthcare. I was very much talked into putting her into the hospice system, Caris. She says she started in March 2012, a month after Caris initially told her Medicare denied her claim. They said, it's been approved. We put her as having kidney disease. And that was the least of her problems at the time. As an only child, you can imagine her despair when she came to terms with the fact her mother qualified for hospice. I was so upset. I thought hospice, you know, that's that's it. You're going to your death is imminent. But it turns out in hindsight, her death wasn't imminent at all. I think it was uh, at least 2 years before she passed away. 2 years before she died? Yes. Yes. She says it always struck her as odd, especially now. The federal government, along with the states of Tennessee and Virginia, filed this whistleblower complaint against Caris Healthcare back in 2014 on behalf of a former nurse that worked at the Bristol, Virginia office. A federal judge unsealed the case last month. The court documents accused Caris of leaving patients and their families unaware of the company's true intentions. Barbara Hinkle, a former nurse who worked here for 10 months in 2013, said during the admission stage, Karis instructed employees to find any diagnosis that would make the case for a terminal illness so the company could bring in more patients and in turn make more money. Once a patient was in the system, the whistleblower said her supervisor instructed her to only document signs or symptoms that showed patients declining due to their terminal illnesses and never to document improvement. Effectively recertifying patients as having six months or less to live, whether it was appropriate or not. The federal government called it a systematic, long-lived, and continuing fraud. Through a public relations firm, Karis officials declined an on-camera interview. But in this statement, the company said it will vigorously defend the lawsuit's allegations, telling us Karis has the utmost confidence in its processes for determining patient eligibility for hospice and in the clinical judgment of those within the company on the front lines of providing care to patients. Karis added, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services acknowledges the prognosis of terminal diseases is not an exact science and does not place a limit on how long a person can receive hospice benefits as long as they remain eligible. The company said its admission staff, which includes doctors, nurses, social workers, and chaplains, make thoughtful and data-driven decisions based on multiple factors that play a role in what are often complex eligibility decisions, adding allegations that call that expertise and judgment into question are simply without merit. Hearing the allegations, I feel bad about it. Gail Fleener found out about the whistleblower lawsuit from us. It makes me mad. It now makes her question if her mom really needed hospice care to begin with and if she really needed to remain under Karis's care for as long as she did. I have a very bad, bad feeling towards it all now. Perhaps most frustrating, according to her daughter, 
is the fact that she says Dorothy Fleener wasn't in hospice care when she died. Instead, less than a month after the whistleblower stopped working at Karis, Fleener says the company gave her this document, notifying her that her mother likely would not be eligible any longer moving forward. She was in the worst shape she'd been in. I really had reached the point that I could see her death coming. She died two and a half months later, but she wasn't alone. I was fortunate enough to be holding her hand when she took her last breath. Although Fleener says her mom Dorothy had an exceptionally long stay in hospice, we should mention neither she nor her family are plaintiffs in this case. Federal law allows companies to remove a patient from hospice after a physician or nurse practitioner meets face to face with the person. Meetings that are required by law every 60 days. Kara says the company's data shows it compares favorably nationally with other hospice providers when it comes to length of stay and the number of people it discharges while still alive. I want to tell you, Josh, too, we mentioned a federal judge unsealed this case last month. After that judge did that, Tennessee and Virginia basically made the decision to remove themselves as plaintiffs from this case. But a spokesperson for Tennessee Attorney General says that doesn't necessarily mean the states won't collect any damages if the U.S. wins this case. All right, Namor Peter Nate, thank you. And speaking of damages, the U.S. is asking a jury to freeze Karis's assets and repay the U.S. government up to $11,000 per violation, plus three times that amount. The lawsuit accuses Karis of six counts of fraud.